The No Commission Art Fair, started by hip hop star Swiss Beats, I should say Swiss Beats, I'm sorry, is an art fair designed not only to give artists free exhibition space for their work, but also all the proceeds from their art sales. Now, No Commission is coming to the Bronx this week, but two Bronx artists, graffiti artist John Crash Matos and filmmaker Edward Bagan, are here to talk about their disappointment at the exclusion of so many Bronx artists. And we welcome them now to the show. And uh, gentlemen, good to have you here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so, for having us on. thanks. So here it is, there's this uh, art fair. Mm -hmm. And yet and still, from your perspective, uh, there's a lot that's missing. So I'll, I'll let you start. Well, I mean, uh, one, of the, one of the things that, that we saw right away, I mean, it was a glaring omission that you have 31, 36 artists, and only one has roots in the community itself. Uh, which is John Ahern, who has been here in the 80s and the 90s, has a studio still in the Bronx, and is loved by the community. He's part, of, actually, of, of the history of the community uh, going forward and in the past. But the problem becomes, and, and, and to be clear, we're not against any of the artists that are participating in the, in, the, in the big show. The thing is just a glaring omission, the fact that we, as artists, weren't included, weren't consulted, and it becomes a pattern where we see this time and time again. Um, last year when they had the macabre suite uh, that they did in, in one of the Somerset buildings, uh, Keith Rubenstein's properties, it was the same thing. They did an event where they invited all these celebrities, it was al almost by invite only, and it sort of ridiculed the, the, the South Bronx by having the thematic be a Bronx burning party with uh, you know, special effects garbage cans that spewed fire, uh, bullet riddled uh, cars, and here we're going less than a year later, something similar happens. Um, in the sense that the community is not consulted, the community is not included. And so what we're basically saying, you know, how does something like that take place where you're saying that this is going to be a big event in the Bronx and yet, just like the Bruckner Boulevard, it sort of just bypasses us mm -hmm. and route to somewhere else. So, in frustration with the fact that there is this lack of representation, you both have decided we're going to put something on our own. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I spoke to Ed and immediately, you know, the reaction was to do something. Um, it wasn't anti, but something um, to show that these artists are here. So um, we spoke about it, and we're doing it at, at the space that my daughter and I opened called Wallworks um, the same uh, week, and that that no commission is going on. So we're doing it Friday evening. This coming Friday. So we know no commission is started by uh, Swiss Beats, yeah. and Swiss Beats has uh, you know putting this together. You guys actually had a conversation with him about Correct. the concern about the lack of local uh, artists and being that. And what was what was the conversation and what was his response? Um, well, it started with uh, with with Ed and um, David Gonzalez. Um, they tweeted Swiss back and forth, and then he Swiss called me because we we've, we've um, done stuff in the past, and um, the concern actually started um, regarding the 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 the, the place where. The uh, exhibition was going to be held, which was um, p the Piano District, you know, which is the name that they're trying to convert the My Haven and the uh, Port Morris section into. Um, so it started with that, and then um, Swiss started getting a lot of negative feedback on uh, in, in, um, on, on the internet. So we spoke at length uh, Friday night and Saturday and Saturday into Sunday, and um, he sensed that something was wrong. And it's actually, it wasn't him, it was, it was the people that he's working with that excluded some of the artists. So it wasn't, you know, him per se. So we spoke and, and um, immediately he knew something was wrong. So we spoke and he said, look, you know, we want you guys to be involved deeper than, you know, originally planned. And he got us out there. Um, he got me and, and another artist, James um, Rodriguez, known as Sexer, to come out and paint the facade of the building. But I didn't want it to be just me. You know, I wanted other people to, to participate, so we got the tasks would come in. We have um, we have photographers talk to us about ideas, um, and so the mural itself, which faces right on Lincoln Avenue, at the main entrance to the VIP area, um, is is pretty phenomenal. It, it, you know, it's, there's so much going, and when Swiss, you know, and his people were there, they were like, you know. We, you know, what were we thinking? Right. Yeah. Mistakes, yeah. mistakes happen. Yeah, mistakes yeah, yeah, yeah. happen. And it's unfortunate because I think what happens is when you get people of that caliber, they have people to manage things for us. So, you know, the, the issue I think only becomes in this case where a celebrity loans his name to a novel idea because the fact that artists 
are not having to pay any commission for any monies that generated out of the sale of their work is a noble idea. So we're not against that. We're not against the artist. So it's kind of a faux pas. I mean, he, se he seems to have taken ownership of it right away. But uh, the reason we're still going through with the, the, the demonstration on Friday is because I think we, you, you have to stand up against these things. If mm. we allow someone to preempt what we already had planned to get the word out that we're not going to tolerate these kinds of things, then it would be a missed opportunity. And I think that you know, uh, people like him and others that hope to come into the community and do things with us should be aware that there's a community here. One of the things that bothered a lot of artists was that the flyer that they were putting out at the beginning said, bringing back art and music back to mm. the to the Bronx. Well, I, I, I mean, excuse me, Never but left. the brother the brother's <laughs> right. made 65 million dollars from his from his craft that started in the South Bronx and he's a Bronx native. So we realize he made a mistake, but we got to make sure we correct the record because a lot of the art that has gone around the world like graffiti, hip hop and others which has become a, a worldwide phenomenon and billion dollars in the industry has been generated through it started in the South Bronx. So let's not, we shouldn't get it twisted. We just have to make sure that we maintain the record and that with things like that, we have to stand or it keeps happening because already this is like the second time. Do you feel like it's hard for particularly Bronx artists to really get the showcase that they deserve? I think so. I think that what happens is you have people, I mean, it's who controls the list. Let's, let's call it a list. It's mm. who says, these are the people that are going to be included in any thematic exhibit, whether it's photography, whether it's painting, whether it's performance where it's literary, someone has to create that list, somebody has to sort of pull in who's gonna be part of that. And I think too many times, they, the people that do that are curators that are sort of working on a different strata, and they don't necessarily know what anything we do in the Bronx is about, but they don't also bother to learn or do their homework. So they figured they're gonna bring something that always favors them. And a lot of it, a lot of times, tend to be Eurocentric, you know, right? They don't, they don't consider our art to be art, and yet here it is uh, sort of making its way around the world. And I think that when anyone comes into a community and tries to impose their culture on another culture, that's wrong. And we're not putting up with it anymore. So the show will take place, and obviously uh, you'll have your own. What's been the response? What's been the talk since you decided to go your own route, given the fact that this is coming in? Well, I mean, the response has been great. Um, to, 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 you know, Swiss is totally behind what we're doing. Mm. He's totally, you know, he, he loves the idea. He loves the fact that people um, are, you know, not angered, but you know they moved to participate in something like this. So he said, "Look, you know, I want to, I want to help you guys out in any way. Like just, just knowing that is is good enough." So um, the response has been great. We're getting a lot of feedback from a lot of artists who um, I might never even know. You might not even know that you know that live in the Bronx, that work in the Bronx, and there's going to be a chance for them to come up. Mm -hmm. right. When we talk about artists, obviously people who are watching right now have their own perception mm -hmm. of what artists are. What kind of art will we be seeing at your particular event? Photography, um, acrylics, pastels, drawings, you know, um, maybe people, performance artists coming in in costume. We don't know. It's open. The mm -hmm. doors are open. They're going to come in Friday night and, and we're going to have a great time. Yeah, and one of the things we've asked the artists in the call, the call to, to gather is that bring your art. Mm -hmm. So. His space obviously is only going to be a hold, but so much, but we're asking people to bring something that they can carry, an art piece, whether it's a poem, something, so that yeah. also the street can be flooded with visually with people holding art so mm -hmm. that you can see what's actually bubbling out out of the fabric of the South Bronx. Talk about the fabric of the South Bronx. So you, you guys have been here throughout the course of the whole show, heard a lot of the conversation uh, from the green room. <laughs> Tell us what do you think uh, with regards to gentrification, or progression from your perspective being a Bronx side, what do you see? Well, look, I was here in the, in the 70s. I've been here all my life. And, you know, when, when, when I hear people try to take the word gentrification, which it is a bad word, the original connotation of South Bronx, I mean, of gentrification is the fact that it's displacing people, that people are observing other people through economics, right? Whether it's housing, whether it's work, and other things. And so now when people say that it's basically a, a dog whistle, to, to activists, I say, I don't hear it because I'm on, the, I'm on the right side of the issue. If you're hearing the whistle, it's because you're on the wrong side of the issue. So I just don't like that. But gentrification is not a new thing. That's the label that it's gotten now. You know, manifest destiny, uh, taking people's property just because you can, that's something that goes back hundreds of years. This is just a new manifestation of it, right? I was here in the Bronx when the fires occurred, mm -hmm. right? And when people were doing flight, white flight because brown folks, black and brown folks were moving in. That was one aspect, but also the people that burnt down the South Bronx are the same people that now have come back to rebuild it for gain. They gained when they burned it down and now they went again and again. Now the people that stood here, right, don't move and prove, and we did that, 
or are the ones that are now going to be displaced because someone else wants to make a profit off of the property uh, and increasing. And, and these kinds of parties tend to be used to sort of increase the value. The whole idea of using the arts in communities around the nation, whether it's Brooklyn, Dumbo, and other areas, uh, Lower East Side, Spanish Harlem, it's been the same tactic. Seated with artists that are not necessarily part of the, the community, uh, try to increase the value that way, make it the new cool place to go to, and then get everybody else out, mm -hmm. just so that you can increase the event. So, you know, so we're not putting up with that anymore. I think that we're a little bit more savvy than we were in that other period, and we have, we're gonna be a little bit more proactive than inactive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the mom and pop shop uh, comment was funny because my daughter and I opened up a small little gallery. So if that's not a mom and pop shop, then I don't know what is. You know, and we did that three years ago, and, and we're thriving. So mom and pop businesses still exist? Oh, yeah, you? yeah, very much so. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, and that's a conversation I think that many people are still having around the borough because you talk about progression, mm -hmm. and then you talk about gentrification, and both of those are hard words for some people to be able to digest, but yet still the conversation is going forward and things are happening in our borough and admittedly Absolutely. things are happening good. And, uh, you know, but I think the question on the hearts and minds of many here in right. the borough is um, whether or not they will be a part of that process exactly. and how they're actually included in that process. And so that conversation will continue to go on uh, on this show and then and then uh, some other shows as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, before we get out of here, I want you to once again to give people an opportunity who want to come check out the work, check out the uh, art, tell them where they're going and what they can do. Um, Wall Works Gallery is at 39 Bruckner, corner of, of Alexander Avenue. Um, we open Tuesdays through Fridays, 11 to 5. And everyone, Friday night, 6 to 9, they can bring artwork in and, you know, and we're going to have uh, photographers shooting the artists and we're going to put them on our website and, you know, and it's, it's and Swiss uh, said that he's going to swing by and, you know, show support, which is, a, again, it's a great thing. He understands right. where we're coming from. Right. And I think that's what's good about this. I think in this case, you know, we, 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 the squeaky wheel gets the grease, we made a little noise, we got people's attention for the right reasons, and in this case, this was a brother that, that heard and hopefully is going to work with the community in the right way going forward. So that's... that's I mean, we want that's him to a, come back again next year to do exactly. it again. Right. So, you know. So hopefully next year when he comes back, he does it again, but this time... Well, now he knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 it'll, yeah. Be, it'll have a little different flavor to yeah. it. Seeing some pictures before we get out of here, so tell us a little bit about what we're seeing out here. Oh, this was uh, the mural installation outside of the, the space where no commission is going to be taking place of. Um, right now, uh, yeah, this, this is uh, almost the finish of the installation from um, all day yesterday. Uh-huh. Yeah. All day? All day. Wow. How long did it take you? Uh, we started about midday and we finished about um, eight. Whew. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good work. Good thank work. You. Well, thank, thank you. you guys for coming. Thank and, you. And Thanks definitely continue us. to keep us updated. We want to know more about it and certainly we'll have you guys back on the show as well. Thank Absolutely, you. man. All right. Bronx strong, brother. Bronx strong. We'll keep it here. That's right. All right, listen, unfortunately, we are out of time for today's show. I want to thank our guests for joining us. Most of all, I want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in. Now, if you missed any part of today's show, you can catch the Recablecast at 5 and 10 p.m. on Cablevision's Channel 67. If you don't have that and you're on Verizon Files, you know we're on 33. Or you can watch us anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. Been a pleasure coming to your homes. Darren Jaime saying take care. God bless and we we'll hope to see you soon.